Good morning, everybody, and welcome out to the Infusionsoft Mastermind call here today. My name is Scott Richens. I am the manager of the live events team here at Infusionsoft, and I'm excited to be with you all. It uh, looks like we have quite a few people here jumping on the call. So as we're getting started here, what I love to do is make sure that audio and video is coming through loud and clear. So if you can hear me just fine, you can see my screen. Go ahead and give me a shout out. Let me know where you're joining us from there in the questions section. As we're going here today, the way these sessions work, if this is your first time, welcome. What I invite you to do is interact with me, engage with me as we're going through this particular session. You can use the, the uh, go to meeting questions section on the right hand side of your screen. There's typically a dialogue box there that says go to webinar and there's a questions portion. And if you type your questions in there, they come directly to me and then I can answer those questions as we go. Looks like we got a lot of people sounded in here. We got uh, we got Chase, Christopher, uh, Casey, Liz, Jason, join us. Uh, Lisa, join us from New Jersey. Judy from New York City all over the place, Atlanta, Vegas, San Jose, London, Ontario. So we uh, we got folks join us from all over the world here. Looks like we are ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip on my screen. I got a few things to go through here this morning to uh, really lay the groundwork for what we're gonna be doing. And then I am going to dive into teaching you uh, what to do here. Um, many, I just saw you jumped on here and I got an email to respond to there. I, I apologize for that one. So let me, uh, let me flip on my screen here and hopefully you guys should be able to see my screen. Give me one moment. There we go. I have the right screen showing here. So let me, uh, turn on my presenter view and we are good to go. All right. So a couple things that I want to point out real quick as we're getting started in Fusionsoft University. We did just open up one additional session uh, that's going to be in November the 19th through the 22nd here in Chandler. I also got word that we will likely be opening up one, one more in the East Coast in December. So keep an eye out for that. That's our four-day training uh, that we put on and two days of advanced, two days of basic. You can join us there and find out more information at infusionsoft.com slash university for all the details. Also, I want to give a plug here for the uh, the submissions, um, the topic submissions, the voting uh, platform that we have for this. I don't even know how to describe it. Basically, you guys choose what we're talking about. This topic here today, creating logic-driven surveys was one that was voted up by you all, by the users. Um, it was submitted and I believe by Jeff and voted up by everybody else. So each week I will dive in, take a look at what the top uh, the top vote getter is. And if that's something that we can pre present on and talk about, we will do so. Uh, it looks like next week we're looking at one that's quick ways to work through Infusionsoft. So I already have somebody lined up to, uh, to work on that one while I'm out running our Infusionsoft University in Orlando next week. So uh, be sure to dive in there. I send out the link every week. It's mastermindwebinars.uservoice.com. You can, you can submit your own topics or you can go in and just vote up other topics that are of interest to you. So go ahead and check that one out and uh, appreciate the feedback and the input from you guys as we're going. Now, to get back to this particular topic, you know, today's topic, what we're going to be talking about is creating logic-driven surveys. The question was, how do I create logic-driven surveys uh, within Infusionsoft? How do I go through and actually set that up so I can gather more information? So I wanted to lay a little bit of context on that one for those of you that may not actually be using or employing logic-driven surveys within your business and within your marketing as well as your follow-up to your customers. So when we start looking at life cycle marketing, that's where I like to start, the framework that I like to work within. And when I got thinking within the framework of life cycle marketing, where do surveys come in? Well, one of them is right here within the nurture portion. When we're going through and educating our customers or we're wanting to follow up with them after they've opted in, after we've captured their information, we're following up to then drive them to the point of becoming a customer. The more relevant we can make our follow up, the better off we are, the more effective we can be. So sometimes to gather more of that information, we may want to leverage a survey, ask them a simple survey that we can then get some more information about them. The other place that we can start looking at it is post-sale. 
to really start looking at our customers and how do we gather more information about our customers? How do we, we deepen our relationships with our customers? And we can do that here towards uh, the back end after we've made the sale uh, in the deliver and satisfy stage, we can send out a customer satisfaction survey and the upsell customers and get referrals. We may first wanna do some sort of a survey like an NPS, a net promoter score to understand how happy they are with the service that they've received, with the product that they've received. And then depending on whether or not they're happy, we can then request referrals or offer some upsells. Or if they're not happy, we can then follow up with them and, and try and rectify the situation. So there's a lot of power in surveys to gather some additional information. And let's talk about some of those. Why use the surveys? The first one that I talked about here was customer satisfaction, to gather information from your customers. Find out whether or not they're happy with your products and services. This is something that we use heavily here at Infusionsoft. Uh, we, we don't just use a customer satisfaction score. We actually use something called NPS, Net Promoter Score, that even looks deeper than customer satisfaction. Instead of saying, how satisfied are you? We're asking the question, on a scale of zero to 10, how likely are you to refer our product or service to a friend or to a colleague? And now we're looking at not just, am I willing to put up with you and how you're treating me, but what, would I recommend my mother to you? Would I recommend my friend to you? Would I recommend people that I respect to you? And if you get a very high rating on that one, that, that's much, uh, much more telling than your customer satisfaction score. But that helps you understand what your place is in the market. That helps you understand what your connection is with your customers. So if you ever wonder why we're pulling you guys all the time, that's, that's our barometer. That tells us how we're doing with you. So customer satisfaction is a great reason to use surveys. Um, invite, uh, it, it, you can invite communication here. You're asking people to give you feedback. You're opening up that doorway so where there's two, two ways of communication. Instead of you just uh, pushing out your messaging and your marketing out to people, now you're inviting that communication back from your customers and your prospects so that you can learn more about them and what it is that they need from you, what, where they find value in your business and your service. The other thing that I like to mention here was trend watching. You can start to watch trends or shifts within responses. If you're doing surveys over time, customer surveys over time, you can start to, to track some trends. What are things that are trending up and trending down and where do you potentially need to go to work? Now, today's particular topic is talking about how we use logic-driven surveys, which can be any one of these, customer satisfaction surveys, inviting communication, trend watching, but logic-driven surveys are ones that are now going to shift answers or questions rather based on prior answers. We're now going to ask you different questions depending on the answer that you just gave us. So that, that's where things become a little bit more complex. If we were just creating some surveys within Infusionsoft, not a big deal. You can throw together a web form, put some radio buttons and such on it. But then the question of, well, what if I want to increase my engagement with my customers? What if I wanna increase the relevance of my surveys to my customers, which is something you very much ought to consider if you're putting together a longer survey. It's one thing on a paper survey to just say, if you answered no to the previous question, you know, skip this question. Um, but, but when you're doing an online survey, uh, your, your, your abandonment rates will greatly increase the more that your relevance of your survey decreases. Okay, so by creating logic driven surveys, what you're really able to do is pinpoint and create a unique path for each of your respondents as they come through your survey. So then the question that we're presented with here today is, well, how do we do that with Infusionsoft? So I wanted to go through three different types of solutions here. Okay, usually I'll just pick one and I'll offer it up to you guys, but I wanted to show you guys the breadth of what we have available, what's out there in the Infusionsoft community, and let's talk about each one of those, why you would choose to use one versus the other. The three type, types of options that we have, number one, it's third-party plug-and-play survey apps. There are applications out there. There are uh, applications that have been created specifically to work with Infusionsoft. There are independent applications that have been integrated with Infusionsoft that really do everything for surveys and then pass the information to Infusionsoft. So that's one that we'll talk about here. The other one is other plugins to Infusionsoft that we can leverage to make uh, logic 
uh, logic driven surveys a little bit easier to create. So we're not using a third party platform survey platform, but we can actually leverage Infusionsoft to run this. And the third one is some code that you can add to Infusionsoft. So really, we've got the gamut here. Number one is if you're somebody that just wants a plug and play solution that's going to give you everything. Great. Take a look at that one. Number two, if you're a little bit afraid of code, number two might be the one for you. Number three, if you like getting into some code, great. Um, then, then I'll give you a little bit of code that you can use there. So Let's talk about the first one here, third-party solution. We're going to go easiest to hardest. Third-party solution, what I like about these is that they're a true survey solution in this case, okay? You get a lot of reporting from these that is the typical reporting that you would want to see from your surveys. If you're wanting to go in and start looking at trends or comments or responses or otherwise, when you have a platform that has been wholly built to gather survey data, the reporting is going to be congruent with that. Infusionsoft was not built to be a survey platform. We can make it do some surveys and such. But reporting, if your reporting is something that's extremely important to you and you're running a lot of surveys, this is the solution that I would recommend. Okay. The third thing here is that you can selectively pass the data. So what that means is, is instead of having to create custom fields or, or tags and everything in Infusionsoft to store your data, you can just pass across some of the relevant data. So you get to select that. And here's my recommendation. I recommend that you use this one if you're conducting lots of surveys and if you need to pull some really intelligent data from your surveys, okay? Because these are built to do that. Now, when we start talking about these third-party ones, there's two of them that I'm really aware of out in the Infusionsoft community currently. One is called Question Mine. The other one is called Survey Gizmo. Uh, both of these are, are very, well, let me, let me say it's the Survey Gizmo integration by Novak Solutions. Um, let me shift here real quick and pull up each of their sites. Question Mine is one that, that does a whole bunch. I've, I've checked out their, uh, their platform here and was very impressed by that. What it goes through and does, it allows you to create surveys and quizzes and heck, you can even do variable logic videos with surveys in them. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do with Question Mine. And that one then, inter, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Integrates, not interacts. Integrates with Infusionsoft directly and can pass the information across. So you can you can go check out Question Mine. They're in our marketplace. And, and you can check out reviews from others that have leveraged question mine within their business, but this is a plug and play solution. This is something that does all of your reporting for you, allows you to create your surveys outside of Infusionsoft and then create all the logic there within their platform. The other one is one that I've recently come across, uh, Novak Solutions, Joey Novak is behind this one. And he, he put together an integration, he and his team put together an integration between Infusionsoft and Survey Gizmo. So Question Mine was a platform that they built to integrate with Infusionsoft and, and some other applications out there. Survey Gizmo is an independent survey app that, uh, that Novak Solutions has now created an integration between the two of those. So those are both solutions for you that enable you to leverage a full-on third-party uh, survey application and then pass the information back to Infusionsoft. If you want to know more about either one of those, I recommend that you check them out. I will post out their information. I'll tweet that out here as soon as I'm done with this particular webinar so that you can then access that information. But those are two third-party solutions. If you're, if you're doing a lot of uh, surveys, if you're really needing to gather some, some deep data and stats on your information, these are the ones that I would look at using so that you can get all of that information. Now, as we shift back here, the next one that I want to start talking about are some plugins that we can then leverage with Infusionsoft. Okay, when you're leveraging the plugins, uh, there there are different plugins here that we're going to talk about. What, but what the plugins do here that's different than the third-party apps is the plugins will enable us to use Infusionsoft web forms to actually ask the questions. Okay. We don't have to create this in a third party app. We'll just create this using web forms inside of Infusionsoft. And what most of these plugins will leverage is something called a conditional thank you page. So every time somebody fills out a web form, you have the option to then go in and create or define what your thank you page is going to be. And what most of these plugins now leverage is that thank you page they you can send it to one of their sites or otherwise and it does all the logic for you and it determines which page to send them to afterwards 
the third uh, the third point here that I wanted to make is this is based on either their responses in in custom fields, or it can leverage tags. Okay, this is very important to recognize with these plugins. These plugins that that you can use can look at either custom field data or field data, or they can look at tags, whether or not your contacts have tags. So I recommend this if you aren't comfortable with code uh, because you don't really have to do anything with code on these particular ones. Um, unlike the third step that I'll show you here, which is which is all about adding some code into your thank you pages to, to do similar things. So with these, with these uh, plugins, again, the important part is that you can also leverage it based on tags. So if you are running short on custom fields and, and you perhaps need to run a long survey or otherwise, you may want to look at one of these plugins because it can make these decisions based on tags. Now, a few of these plugins that I've seen out there that work really well, one is plus this. Um, another one is one called Route Director. And then a third one that does something a little bit different, and I'll talk about it here in a moment, is called Gravity Forms. And that one's for WordPress only. So let me talk about each of those real quick. Um, plus this, what plus this enables you to do uh, you can go to plusthis.com. This one does a whole bunch of different stuff. If you go to features, goes through, it's, it's kind of like a Swiss army knife, uh, video tracking, Infusionsoft dates, SMS notifications, and customized thank you pages is the specific one that I want to look at here. And basically you can go through and now send people to different pages based on information that you have on them. For example, in this case, logic driven surveys, answers that they've given you. The other one is one called Route Director by 48 Tools. Does very similar stuff on that. It is customized thank you pages. This one based on their tags specifically. So again, if you are uh, if you are short on custom fields, you may want to check out this particular plugin as well. And the way that these ones work, let me dive into Infusionsoft and show you how these particular ones work. Logic driven surveys. Let me pull this one up right here. Basically, what you're able to do is create a web form. Okay. And within that web form, you can go through and you can begin to ask some different questions. Actually, I'm just going to leverage uh, what I was beginning to build here earlier for my next example. What you can do within one of these, uh, one of these options here, one of these web forms, is actually go in and ask a question. In this case, I used a drop down field. Okay, you can't see the options right here when I'm in the in the web form itself editing it, but I used a drop down field. You could additionally use a field snippet here for radio button. Okay, and within this radio button, you could go through and ask a question. You know, the the example I was shown there was business description. Uh, what type? Uh, what best describes? your business. And I could add some different options here. So those options that I have uh, could be um, I sell through a sales team. It could be um, I sell through an online store or otherwise. I could add multiple options and then on each one of these, I could apply a tag. So in this one, I could say it's a sales team. Next one, I could say it's an online store. Now, what I can then begin to do with these different options here with plus this or route director is you'll typically go within their application and then create uh, what your rules are. So within one like plus this, you can simply go in and you can create your feature here of a customized thank you page. And with that, you simply say, create a condition based on a tag, and you can go look at the different tags that you have. So the one that we just talked about there being a sales team, if they have this tag, then I can determine which page to send them to. If they have the online team, I can determine which page to send them to. Now, where do those pages come from? The pages come from what we want our next question to be. Again, when we're using Infusionsoft to do this, we can just create different web forms. So I can go back here to campaign and based on their different responses, I may send them to different questions, different follow-up questions. So for example, sales teams here, I could create a web form that says sales teams. 
And notice right here, I'm saying as someone who, who primarily sells through sales teams, I could then customize the follow-up questions here. So when I'm creating this in, in plus this a route director, what I'm basically doing is I can grab the code for this hosted version of the question, this one right here, and that's where I want to send them, okay? This web address is where I want to send them. So then in plus this, I simply say send them to this particular second page, which is going to ask them the next uh, the next information, the next question. You can always set a default one if they don't follow any of those particular ones, okay? So I can choose whatever my default next question might be, and then here I can say give your, uh, give your feature a name. So on this one I can say conditional logic, and I will say this is my mastermind question number one. When I add this feature, basically what it then does is it gives me a URL here. And what they're doing is they're, they're having code on their side that's going to run all this logic for us. So we just copy this information right here. And when we jump back over to Infusionsoft, I don't want to put it on the second page. I actually want to go back to the first page right here. What type of business are you? And on my thank you page, I can make sure to change this to a web address and pass this information in there, okay? We pass the custom, uh, the contacts information to the thank you page. And now what this will go through and do for us is it passes it to their surveys, again, uh, sorry, to their servers, plus this or route director, it'll pass it over there. And then they run the logic and determine what the next page is that somebody's supposed to be sent to. There's a lot of other things that you're able to do um, when, with, with these particular tools, you can do one click upsell type stuff with variable, um, uh, with variable pages, variable upsell offers. So there's a lot of different information that you can do on that one. I'm getting a quick question here from Amber. Amber, good to see you on here. Um, and the question within here is great. Can't you do that with decision diamonds? And, and I want to address that one here as we're going uh, before I get too much further. Can't you just do that with decision diamonds? Why couldn't I have decision diamonds in here that take them to different places. The thing with the decision diamonds, that's great for making decisions between different steps, okay? And, and here's what I mean. When somebody fills out this web form, they're immediately taken to the thank you page. We have no control through the Infusionsoft decision diamonds to change which thank you page that they go to. And so that's why some of these other tools come into play. The thank you page is something that's just gonna be consistent for everybody. Everybody goes to that same thank you page. Um, if we were following up via emails, we could send different emails to them to have them then click through to take another survey. But if we're trying to go question one, question two, question three, question four, and make those questions back to back and make them variable, then, um, then we need to look at using something like this that is going to change the thank you page that they go to each time. So Amber, I hope that one answers your question there. So that's, that's the example here of creating this through, uh, through using a plugin. We're able to create different pages within here, uh, different web forms. If I go back to campaign, we can create different web forms. And now we're just connecting these through these third-party plugins that are going to take them directly from one to the other. Now, it's important when you're using this method is you need to make sure that on your second pages, you have this hidden field. You need to have a hidden field of email in there. And I recommend that you use our JavaScript versions of our form, okay? The reason being the JavaScript version right here has some scripting within there that will take any of this custom information, uh, any of this, uh, like, like the email address is key to keep the email address on every single one of these forms. So that as somebody goes through and submits each, each different question, um, it's tied back to the same contact record. So it's very important that you have the hidden email field on there. And in order for that to automatically populate, you're going to want to use the JavaScript snippet here, the JavaScript version. If you use an HTML version and put it on your own site, you'll have to add some additional coding that will pre-populate that, pre that information. So that's just something to be aware of there. Okay. Now, Sticking within this particular vein, I mentioned there are a couple different ways that you can do this one, okay? Uh, when we're talking about plugins, okay? I'm gonna circle back around to the Gravity Form ones uh, a little bit later since that's a little bit different here. And I'm going to move on to the Add Code to Infusionsoft portion. We'll circle back around to the Gravity Forms in a bit. 
when you want to add code to Infusionsoft, um, here, here's my agreement with you guys. Um, I, I, I put together some code on this one and uh, worked work with some of the consultants here, uh, leveraged some code that they had put together. Um, and it, the agreement is this. If I give you guys this code, our, our technical support team doesn't run this one. I can't help you out with this one. If you don't know code, please don't use this. Um, look at one of those other CAN solutions, okay? Um, if, if you call into our technical support team, they can't help you with this. I, I worked on getting this to help some of you out that, that may need to leverage it and can put it to use, give you something to start with. But uh, just uh, if <laughs> I'll get in a little bit of trouble if you guys call into technical support asking for some question on this one. So anyways, just be aware of that. Uh, use Infusionsoft Web Forms. Same thing here that we talked about with the plugins. The other thing here is the way that we leverage this, it's similar to the plugins except you can just code this um, to use it yourself. You can create the code yourself. Here's the main difference though, when you're coding this one. This one has to use custom fields uh, to make the decisions. We can't use the radio buttons on this one. We can't use tags based on this particular solution, okay? Again, if, if you're a DIYer, you're interested in doing this, then great. What I've got put together for you, you can leverage some custom fields and I'll show you how this one works. So what I had put together here originally, if I dive back into my web form here, I'll ditch this radio button. I have a custom field that I've created. And that custom field says business description. As a matter of fact, I have that custom field over here within Infusionsoft, okay? These custom fields are created underneath admin settings. And then you can go here to set up custom fields. I'll click go. One of the ones that I have within here is uh, the business description. If I click edit, what we're able to do is put in our different options here. Okay, I'm defining my different options. So I have, we sell through a sales team. We primarily, primarily sell through an online store. Those are my different options that I have set up. Now, when I place that here, I may be asking them the very first question. I'm asking for some feedback. So I'm going to allow them to put in that drop down you know, uh, to, to choose which one it is. When they click submit, I'm going to send them to the thank you page. Now, what I had within here on the thank you page originally, you can, you can customize the thank you page here. I would put something that's not, uh, that's not this generic. I would customize it a little bit, but nobody should really see this particular page and I'll show you why. Let me pull up um, some code here that I was working on earlier, okay? What we can do is we can put a little bit of JavaScript code within that particular page. And basically we create a variable here that is looking at that business description. We're looking at what was their response. And then we can say, well, if they pick, we sell through a sales team, send them to this particular URL. You'll notice this URL is different than the next one because this one is the question two that we want to send people to if they're a sales team. Whereas this one is the other web form, the other question too, if you're an online store. Then what we do down here is we put our default else, you know, if, if they don't meet any of these, where do you want them to go anyways? And then down at the very bottom portion here is how many seconds do you want them to wait on this page? So basically we're doing a, a redirect to one of these particular pages. So I put this at 0.5 seconds. Okay, now what happens when we take that code and we place it right within here, is it allows us to go through and now have it redirect to a second page automatically, okay? I was testing this one just beforehand. We'll see if it still works here. So I've got it set up to go from here to here. Uh, if you choose the sales team option, I've got it set up to go here to the online store one if you choose the other option. So let's take a quick look at it. Publish that. And then if I go fill out this particular form, I'm going to pull up the code option here and I'm just going to fill one in here that says mastermind test 11 mm test 11 at scottrichens.com. So somebody fills this one out, chooses, we, prim uh, we primarily sell through an online store and hit submit. It should go through and redirect and, and I made one shift here right before and it looks like I broke that one. So even I have a little bit of trouble on this one, getting it to work right all the time. Let's see if I can do it with my other one. And then test 11, first option here, submit. 
Okay. I've got to go in and work on that code just a little bit more. I'll make sure it's working properly before I post it up for you. But that one should then go in and do an automatic redirect. So that that's the caution here when you're when you're using some of this code stuff um, is if you don't know code and you're not really well versed in code, you may have a little bit of issues with those. Um, I'll make sure that the uh, the form that I get posted up for you guys afterwards um, is actually running this one correct. Um, but that's that's what will then happen is when you hit this particular page, it will do an automatic redirect there uh, to then um, to then take them to the other page. Okay, I've got let me let me try one other bit of code here to show you how that one works. Just the uh, the redirect. Mm. Here we go. I was pulling a couple different bits together here for you, so I apologize on that one. If I go to the thank you page here real quick, I'm going to throw in a, another bit of code that does the same type of thing. It's set to wait about four seconds. And right here, sometimes I got to make just a little bit of change to the web page here to make the thank you page be republished. Okay, now once that one happens, choose any one of these. It takes us to a thank you page. This one should wait about four seconds is what we had it set to do. And then it redirects to another page. So basically, we're just going to shorten up that time and we're going to make it a variable that then sends it to the appropriate page. So I must have had a comma or something out of place, an apostrophe out of place in my code. And I'll make sure that's updated and post that one out to you guys as well once I'm done. So that's what we're able to do as we're going through and creating these logic driven surveys is they will go through and send people the different routes. If you're looking at uh, if you're looking at a lot of different um, a lot of different surveys that you're running, a lot of data that you're going to want to run with, you may want to check out Question Mind. They do videos as well. You can do uh, variable video paths based on questions that people ask. Um, uh, survey Gizmo here, the integration there with uh, Survey Gizmo, Novak Solutions. Um, it, I think Joey reached out to me last night, said he'd even give you guys a deal on that one if you reach out to him. Um, I, I didn't have time to uh, follow up on that, but reach out to him. Let him know that you heard about it on the Mastermind webinar and see if there's a deal that he'll offer you there. Um, Joey, I hope that one's all right there. And then, uh, and then you got plus this and 48 tools, which are ones that can do that conditional redirect. So the code trouble that I was just having um, right there with getting that to redirect, having something out of place. Uh, you can eliminate that need there, that problem there by using one of these particular tools and it actually enhances what you can do by running these based on tags as well as fields and custom fields. So it gives you a little bit more flexibility within the way that you're handling your data and redirecting people. Now, the last thing that I want to show is just another option here called Gravity Forms. Gravity Forms I've demoed probably two months ago in my uh, top WordPress plugins one. Uh, I, I did a mastermind webinar talking about some top WordPress plugins, and one of them was Gravity Forms. And the reason I wanted to pull Gravity Forms within this particular one um, was to give you a quick demo on how you can just make it variable right within the same page. Now, Grid 7 right here is the page of one of our Infusionsoft certified consultants, Sean Tierney. Um, he, he uses Gravity Forms. He's one of the guys that I heard about it from. And if you watch right here, he's got one on his page where he's doing an assessment. And as you choose different options, notice below how things change. If I say not currently selling, it pops up a new question right here. So it's actually just inline variable and you're very easily able to create this within their plugin. Like I said, it's a WordPress plugin. You can go in and set this stuff up, change some of these different variables down here. Again, down towards one of these other ones. He says, would you be open to al alternative compensation? Great. When you say yes, opens up a new field. When you say no, that field isn't even there. So this one allows you to then just build something here within, um, within WordPress and then pass the data over to Infusionsoft using uh, someone in the community created an Infusionsoft plugin that connects Gravity Forms with Infusionsoft. Another one out there is called uh, Zapier that connects the two of those. And you can, you can pass across variable information as well. You can do calculations if you need to um, add up some different scores and such, and then just pass the final result to Infusionsoft. You can do that using something like uh, Gravity Forms as well. So that's that's really what I had here to to talk about. Three different ways that you can then leverage the uh, the 
logic-driven surveys within Infusionsoft. As you're walking through this, um, as you're having people take different questions, you're gathering more information, you can tailor the survey, the follow-ups based on the information that you're giving you, uh, that, that they're giving you before you move them on to the next step. This will really help you increase the uh, engagement of people as they're going through and taking your quizzes helps you reduce the abandonment rate and get more people to the end where they're actually filling out your whole survey and you're getting good data based on that. So here's, here's what I want to do. Uh, I want to pop up a quick poll here for you guys. I know there's a couple questions coming through that I'm going to go uh, go through and, and answer, but want to give you a quick poll. Give me some feedback here on how would you rate the content on today's call if you've found this particular uh, content that we've covered today helpful, what you've learned from it. I'll leave that one up here for about 10 more seconds or 15 more seconds rather as I go through and read some of these questions. All right, I'll close that poll down here in five seconds. We'll go five, four, three, two, one. Perfect. Thank you very much for the feedback on that one. I appreciate it. A um, couple other things. Let's see some of the questions going through here. Um, many, many asked anything between SurveyMonkey and Infusionsoft. Can, is there any integration between SurveyMonkey and Infusionsoft? You know, as I've uh, worked with a number of different people who have done surveys here in the past and, and worked with Infusionsoft, uh, I've heard that you, you actually don't want to use SurveyMonkey because they don't have an API. Um, that enables this type of integration. Survey Gizmo would be the way to go, and that's what uh, Joey Novak and Novak Solutions put together was in that integration there with Survey Gizmo because they have that API that, that can then be leveraged. Uh, let's see. Teddy, good to have you here. Bob, uh, Bob's had some good experience with Brad Martino and Plus This over at Sixth Division, so uh, he, he recommends them. Let's see. What else here? Uh, Don was asking what URL shows up on the thank you page, your own URL or plus this. And it sounds like he's going back here to the plus this uh, situation. Okay. If I, if I pick this one right here and I copy that, okay, plus this, go back over to that particular web form. On the thank you page, what you end up doing with that is you would send it to a web address and you put a plus this uh, URL within here. Now that's not actually going to take them to a URL uh, that plus this is created. It's, it's not going to take them to a, a web page that plus this is created. All that does is it hits their page real quick and then chooses which page to send them to afterwards. So it's just a quick redirect. It's like when somebody clicks on a link in an Infusionsoft email, it hits our servers so that we know that they clicked on it, but then it redirects them to the following page. So I can demonstrate this one real quick. Um, let me verify that I had this set up to work. Okay, it sends it to these different ones. Great. So if I go back over to this particular page and I set this one up as a radio button, we'd configure this one to say what type of business. And one was sales team, the other was um, online. And this said it was a sales team tag. This said it was an online tag. And then when somebody fills this particular one out, it should take them to the thank you page, which is going to be a plus this thank you page. You do have to check this box. And as I republish that one, let's see if this one works. I've not, I've not used their tool much. If, if I break it here, that's probably my fault. I would invite you to just reach out to them. Um, right here, I'm a sales team, submit, okay? And that redirected me right there. I'm someone who primarily sells through a sales team. So that was an immediate redirect right there. Uh, Stuart was asking a uh, question here. Can you not turn off thank you pages? Then the de decision diamond would go to the next form. Stuart, good question there. Um, it, actually, that's a very creative use of that. Maybe that's something we, that we can build within the software in the future. But at this point, no, uh, there is not a way to then turn off the thank you pages and have the decision diamonds control where people go. Uh, the decision diamonds uh, within there are, are more controlling things on our server side, not just on the front side there. 
So that's that's a great way to implement this if, if that were possible, but right now it's not possible. Uh, Christopher was asking if I could explain a little bit more about the hidden email field. Okay, so on this particular page, what I've got going on um, is I, I pass some information through. Let's see if I had the hidden email field on this one. I'm pulling up something called Firebug. Maybe, there we go. And let's see, email, um, email field on this one, okay? So, so what we would want to then do on this is set this up so that it passes the email through to this particular page, okay? Passes the email across on this particular page so that then it is populated. When you're using our built-in, um, when we're using our built-in uh, JavaScript forms and passing people from page to page, we, we would want to make sure and have it pass this information through in the URL string, okay? So that then it populates the email right here. So what we've got to do within that is just one additional thing on those particular uh, on those particular pages, when we're passing that one through, we simply add to it right here on, on these thank you pages. When we're doing it on the thank you page itself here, we will pass through that, that email address. And I'll include that in the documentation here. But basically, within those follow-ups, we want to pass in that email variable so that it then includes their information in that email field. That email field is the key to duplicate checking. Notice here where it says settings, duplicate checking, check using the person's email address. So with that email address, what it's doing is it's tying back to the same contact record each time. Each time they submit a new, uh, a new question, ties it back to the same person. Let's see. Um, Mary, Mary asked a question here when we're using hidden emails for plugin surveys, are there email accounts being used by plus this or route director selling emails? Um, no, no, they're not. All that's doing is just passing data back and forth. Let's see, Bob had... Uh, Bob had some feedback here on the JavaScript snippet. Let's see what's going on here. Gotcha. Bob, Bob was pointing out that within WordPress, you got to be careful there. It, it removes some of the JavaScripting within that. Um, Bob, drop me an email. I came across something yesterday. Um, that that I believe enables you to push in that JavaScript uh, into those WordPress forms. So drop me an email, and I will look for that one. I gotta I gotta go, you know, um, I gotta go kind of rummage through my mind and figure out what that was. I, I just noticed it the other day, though. Hey, Lucho, yeah, that, that one there is off topic. That's pretty far off topic there. Uh, at this point, I haven't seen any of those integrations. Um, and at this point, at, at this point, I don't know that there are any, anything coming. Um, I know we're not planning on building anything. So there may be a third party solution in the works out there, but I'm unfamiliar with one. Let's see. Uh, Stuart asked, where will I post it up? I will post it in the mastermind pages portion. So if you go to mastermind, help.infusionsoft.com slash mastermind, underneath mastermind archive, I will post up uh, the, the video there so you can watch the video. Also within there, um, under download original recording, I'll include download uh, some script information, download additional resources, and that's where I'll have the, uh, the information on what you need to use there. Amber, can you set that uh, that redirect to be zero seconds so it never sh shows up? It just redirects. I think so. I haven't tested that one yet. Uh, Stuart asked about Gravity Forms. Is it passed as tags or fields? You can actually pass it as either one there. Um, I've been using this one myself uh, for some work that I've had to do um, with, with some of our Infusionsoft University stuff. Uh, I've been using a Gravity Forms within that particular one. 
And on that, uh, on that configuration, when I'm running the Infusionsoft Gravity Forms plugin that, uh, that somebody has built, oh, looks like it's taking a little bit of time here. Uh, that particular plugin allows me to go in and match up different information. So based on people's selections, uh, based on the text fields that they fill in, um, then we can match that up to different custom fields inside of Infusionsoft. Hey, Helen, thanks for the feedback on that one. Uh, I, I do appreciate it there. Um, Nick, Nick, uh, follow up with me on an email on that one. We actually have those going on already. Uh, so drop me an email and I'll find out where you can register for those. Christine asked about Poll Daddy. Uh, what are my thoughts on Poll Daddy? Uh, Christine, I actually don't have any experience there with Poll Daddy. Uh, I haven't done any, uh, any digging into their particular business to see what works there, uh, if they can connect with Infusionsoft or not. Um, let's see, uh, Dylan was asking, can we just talk through again, what actually happens with the logic in the thank you pages? Contact answers the question, they get to the thank you page. Yeah. So, so basically what's going on here when, when we're setting this up, really what we're talking about is we, we can ask question by question, uh, different questions based on people's responses. So if in this first one, if in this first, what type of business option, they answer, let me show you what that form looks like. Um, if they answer sales teams versus if they answer online versus if they answer uh, that they're an info marketer or otherwise, we can then take that information and we can follow up differently. We can then deliver them to a different page, a different follow-up page. So notice right here where it says what type of business. Well, I may wanna then ask a different question, a different follow-up question depending on what they answer depending on if they're a sales team or if they're an online store or otherwise. So basically what I can do is I can create different web forms here that will be my different pages. These different web forms will be my different, um, my different questions. That's the word that I'm looking for here. They will be each of my different questions that I can walk them through. So now all we have to do is add some, add some logic within here, add some code within here that will then walk you through the decision, it helps Infusionsoft make the decision here between what should come next, okay? What type of business, sales team or online? Now, depending on what they answer, there are some different ways that we can route where they go. The thank you page is the next page that they'll see. So we can either add some of the JavaScript code in here to this particular page, or we can redirect uh, to a web address, and that's where you can use one of these third-party plugins that will then add that particular information. It, it makes that decision for us. So they host the code and it runs that kind of stuff and then sends people to the second follow-up page there. So then with that code on those thank you pages, it's basically choosing, okay, after you give me a particular answer here, are we taking you here or here or here? Which is the next question? And then if you wanted to direct them all to another question after that, on each one of these, we could go through and customize the thank you page for how they have uh, how they have responded as well. So we could branch out to four different ones. We could then send everybody back to the same uh, to the same question number three, or we could still have variable question threes depending on their answer. Uh, Dylan saying. The web form is the web form a question which gets embedded into the thank you page. No, we're not embedding this into the thank you page. We're not embedding the, the form here into a thank you page. We're, we're simply um, passing them from the thank you page. We're quickly passing them to the next question. So we're just hitting the thank you page really quick to run the logic to then pass them to the appropriate follow-up page. Uh, the thank you page isn't where we're actually putting the form, like right here where it says thank you page. I'm not placing a form within here. I'm simply uh, telling Infusionsoft to send them to the appropriate next form. And so this thank you page is just a, a quick redirect.
Uh, Nick, just respond to the uh, the email that I sent out to you uh, with the mastermind webinar here. Um, Chris, uh, Chris asked that I include the uh, the information on including the JavaScript and WordPress um, when I post some information. Yeah, let me uh, uh, let me go find that information. I'll test that one first to make sure that the JavaScript actually passes correctly. Um, I know that it pulls in the the web form, but I'll test that to make sure that the JavaScript is passing correctly. Dylan, yes. Uh, when you're talking about plus this is what you need to continue the questions and customize thank you pages. Yes, that is one of the options there. <laughs> Bob said it's basically like turning a web page into a live person by answering the customer's answer rather than just giving the same answer to everybody. Yeah, you're now shifting the follow-ups there. Okay, um, that looks like we're about at the end of the questions here. So if you uh, if you have any other questions, go ahead and uh, post those here within the questions portion. Otherwise, we will go ahead and wrap up here for the day. All right. Sounds sounds like that's about it. Amber, looks like you have something else there. Uh, go ahead and drop me an email on that one. Helen, again, appreciate the feedback on that one. Um, and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys on a future webinar. Looks like next week we've got uh, the, the question that's been popping up the most is workflow efficiency, how to move quickly and effectively in infusion soft. So if any of you have some particular thoughts or anything on that, go ahead, come in here, add some comments to flesh this one out a little bit more. If there's some specific things there on workflow efficiency, efficiency, how do you work quickly day to day in infusion soft? What are some tips and techniques? I've got one of our top guys here who's going to be stepping in on that one. Paul Sokol worked with y'all last week and he'll be back here this upcoming week uh, to, uh, to talk to you guys here about workflow efficiency. That's one of his uh, one of his favorite things to talk about. So that's what we're looking at for next week. Again, go in, suggest some topics, vote up the topics that are important to you. And we will look forward to seeing you on a future Mastermind webinar. Thanks so much and have a great day.